You had this trajectory of Bacon stratospherically going into this artistic success, but you had Dyer, this demonic, virile, handsome East End gangster. And their love was doomed, I think, from the start. George Dyer was an East End criminal that met Bacon at the end of uh, 1963 and, depending on the rumour, either broke into his studio in South Kensington or met him actually in Soho as one of his sort of drinking buddies. Very quickly established himself as a kind of his main lover and, and muse. They became inseparable. Dyer was not sophisticated but went to every single exhibition that, uh, that Bacon had, would travel regularly to Paris. Bacon famously never worked from live models. He would either recall their image uh, from memory or critically would start adopting John Deacon's photographs of people like George Dyer. This is really the very first painting where you see the very literal transition of the photographs of Dyer, and specifically that wonderful central image of this rather Napoleonic swagger in Dyer's head. Bacon must have been very privileged to have had a retrospective at the Grand Palais in Paris, which at the time was perhaps the greatest apogee of a living artist's career. The fact that he chose this painting to be in the show, I think, is very emblematic of how important it was for Bacon. But of course, on a personal note, the exhibition was fraught with complexity and great tragedy. On the night of the show, Dyer took his own life and was found on the floor of a hotel, having taken an overdose of barbiturates. Bacon's immediate reaction was as if nothing had happened and that it was important to show a certain sense of self-control. What's perhaps even more interesting is the legacy of Dyer's death. Dyer became arguably an even greater muse. I think the triptychs are pivotal, not only to that creative period of Bacon's life, but also in terms of the love between the two men.